Most people think of San Francisco as a train city. We've got cable cars, we've got historic streetcars, we have a little subway and we're building another subway, and we've got trains running all over the city. But in fact, where our ridership is, is on our bus system. And that's how I get around most of the time. Here on Venice Avenue, this is a big arterial. It is six lanes wide. It was always jammed with cars. And it was a mess, and we knew we needed to fix it. We had three lanes of traffic in each direction, so a total of six lanes. And now we've got two lanes of mixed traffic in each direction, and dedicated two bus lanes in the middle. Outdoor boarding allows a passenger with a prepaid ticket to board any doors without having to go to the front door. It's just like getting on the train. When the train pulls up, you don't have to go through a specific door. You go through any door. Since this is a fixed right away, people know it's permanent because they'll see a boarding platform. We have the shelters. We also have security cameras. They're high definition. You know, people see these stops. It's like, okay, there's something permanent. There's a stop here. And so people see it, whether they're on this side of the street or that side of the street. Although this transit lane looks kind of empty right now, it's actually moving far more people per hour than any of the other general purpose lanes alongside of it. Because these buses carry up to 150 people on them, uh, that is more cars than are on this entire length of highway from one end of San Francisco to the other in one bus. You know, the 49 right here, uh, it's already up 13% uh, in ridership. And that's because we made these lines fast, frequent, and reliable. And that's really what attracts ridership. And that's what makes the overall San Francisco economy work. I get there so much faster. And just knowing, you know, if you're going to go out, just knowing that you're going to have a reliable way back and that it's going to be quick and painless has been uh, a major upgrade for uh, my life. My family doctor used to be up on California Street, and when I leave the office, my worst case was, I think, 45 minutes. Now, I know that that trip is gonna take 10 to 15 minutes because the buses are out of the mixed traffic. If a truck or a car breaks down, the bus goes right past it, so I can get there on time reliably. A lot of the buy-in for this project is about the pedestrian safety. Before they did the Van Ness project, you couldn't get across the street in time and it was just frightening, and there was a lot of pedestrians were killed. Um, you can see where crossing the street is a lot safer. When you have to cross, you've only got just a little short way to go to get to a safe island. It's all marked with the zebra markings, so that's what makes it a much safer pedestrian experience for people. Oftentimes, rail is a lot more expensive than bus. And if you could take the cost savings in investing in bus and, and use that money to invest in walkability, that is really going to benefit everyone. So Van Ness had the dubious distinction of being one of our high injury corridors. We put in a bunch of pedestrian improvements. Before, you really were kind of darting across the six-lane highway. I think it's been nice in particular to have the streetscape improvements on Van Ness so that the overall corridor, uh, the transit experience is improved. We know here at Muni that our place of radical resiliency is our bus system. As an advocate, I, we're always working to make the system as a whole more reliable. And I think, you know, the BRT is a really good reliable system that um, doesn't have some of the complexity that we have with the subway and I would say probably more reliable because with buses you know if there's if there's problems they can actually reroute buses to
and as advocates, we're really pushing for any capital projects to move faster. In, in a number yeah. of cities around the world, I think BRT is a, is a solution that gives you a faster, more reliable system more quickly. I take the light rail all the time and the experience is just very similar. As quiet, as easy, you're in the middle of the street when it picks you up. The stops are less frequent so it's faster. It loads just like a light rail. You're getting on a flat thing, that's exactly what our light rail is. It's not that different. There is uh, a lot of debate in the transit planning world about which is better, rail or bus. So if your interest is primarily in fostering real estate development, there are a lot of things that are more cost effective to do on the land use side than just invest in rail. To attract real estate development, it's critical that the corridor is walkable. So invest in great walkability and landscape and good lighting. San Francisco, all our development is transit oriented and bus rapid transit is a key part of that. There's construction going on all around us. There's 24 new high density, high rise condo complexes being constructed on the two mile strip. We wouldn't have been able to get a light rail system up and running in time to meet those needs compared to getting the BRT up and running because it was cheaper and it was faster to build. And in our case, it has been absolutely the right investment. Rail would have never made sense on Venice. People would have been forced to transfer at either end. It wouldn't have served uh, the regional express buses. Always choose the right transit technology for the job and think about all of the costs and all of the benefits. If one project costs a lot more than the other, what can you do with that savings that will really make a difference for ridership, uh, for equity, and for community planning?